one, the graph of failure. I want you to look at this graph. This is the heart rate file of a runner attempting a marathon. Look at the first 30 minutes. Steady, controlled. Now look at the last 30 minutes. The pace didn't change, but the heart rate line is climbing like an airplane taking off. This runner DNF'd did not finish. He hit the wall at kilometer 30. He thought he was fit because he could run a fast 5K. But this graph proves his engine was broken long before he reached the start line. This is called aerobic decoupling or cardiac drift. It is the silent killer of endurance performance. And the scary part? 90% of you watching this have a graph that looks exactly like this and you don't even know it. Today, we are going to fix your engine. I will give you the 60 minute truth test, the rule of eight, and I will show you why cardiac drift is the reason you are addicted to sugar after your runs. Two, the physiology, the coolant analogy. Before we run the test, you need to understand the mechanism. What exactly is cardiac drift? Imagine you set your cruise control at a pace of six minutes per kilometer. You start running. Minute 10. Your heart rate is stable at 140 beats per minute. Minute 40. Pace is still six minutes, but heart rate creeps to 148 beats per minute. Minute 60. Pace is still six minutes. Heart rate hits 155 beats per minute. What just happened? You didn't run faster, you didn't run up a hill, but your heart is working 15 beats harder to produce the exact same output. The relationship between pace and heart rate has broken. They have decoupled. Why? Think of your blood like the coolant in a car engine. When you run, your engine produces massive heat. To cool you down, your body sends blood to your skin to release that heat, sweat. But this creates a problem. The blood that is traveling to your skin is not returning to your heart to be pumped to your muscles. Your heart panics. We are losing pressure. So it starts pumping faster just to keep the car moving at the same speed. That is cardiac drift. It is the sound of your cooling system failing. Three, the live audit. Let me see your screen. Now, usually I would tell you to go run the test tomorrow, but I want to diagnose you right now. Pause this video. Pick up your phone. Open Strava or Garmin Connect. I want you to find your last long run or steady run, not intervals. Just a steady run over 50 minutes. Click on analysis. Scroll down to the heart rate graph. I want you to trace the line with your finger. Does it stay flat parallel to the bottom of the screen? Or does it start low and slowly climb up towards the top right corner? If your finger went up, you are drifting. You might think, it's normal, I was tired. It is not normal. An elite athlete's line stays flat for two hours. If yours climbs after 40 minutes, your aerobic foundation is crumbling. You are running on borrowed time. Four, the truth test protocol, the lab. Now that you've seen the ugly truth on your phone, we need to measure it accurately to fix it. Here is the exact protocol for the truth test. Do not deviate. Step one, the setup. Choose a completely flat route. No hills. Hills ruin the data because they spike HR artificially. Wear a chest strap monitor. Optical wrist sensors are often inaccurate for this specific test. Step two, the warm up. Run 15 minutes very slowly, get the system online. Step three, the test block. Hit the lap button on your watch. Run for exactly 60 minutes at a steady zone two effort. Critical rule, your pace must remain dead steady. Do not speed up, do not slow down. If you start at six o'clock pace, you finish at six o'clock pace. Step four, the data capture. After the run, upload your file. We are going to compare two data points. P1, first half your average heart rate from minute 10 to minute 30. P2, second half. Your average heart rate from minute 40 to minute 60. 
five. The calculation, the rule of eight. Now let's grade your test. Technically, we are looking for the decoupling percentage. The formula is average heart rate two minus average heart rate one, divided by average heart rate one. But I know many of you hate math. So here is the cheat code. It is called the rule of eight. Look at your average heart rate in the first 20 minutes versus the last 20 minutes. Did your heart rate jump by more than eight beats? Less than eight beats, 0% to 3.5%. Elite aerobic base. Your engine is bulletproof. You are a true diesel engine ready for a marathon. Eight to 10 beats, 3.5% to 5%. Acceptable. You are fit, but you have room for improvement. More than 10 beats greater than 5%. Failure. Your aerobic base is hollow. If you fail the rule of eight, it means your aerobic system collapses after 40 minutes. You cannot run a marathon with a 10 beat drift. You will bonk. Six, the hidden symptom, the sugar addiction. Here is something nobody tells you. Cardiac drift is not just about heart rate. It is about fuel. When your heart rate drifts upwards, it means your body is switching energy systems. You are moving from fat oxidation, zone two, to glycolysis, zone three slash four. You stop burning body fat and start burning pure sugar, glycogen. How do you know if this is happening? The kitchen test. When you finish your long run, do you feel an uncontrollable urge to eat carbohydrates? Do you want to inhale bread, pasta, and sweets? That is not just hunger. That is your brain panicking because you burned through your sugar reserves too fast. If you fix your cardiac drift, you fix your cravings. My athletes finish a two hour run and they aren't starving. Why? Because they burned fat, not sugar. Seven, case study, the story of Alex. Does this really work? Let me tell you about Alex. Alex was a four hour marathoner. He trained hard, but he always cramped at kilometer 30. He came to me and we did the truth test. His pace was steady, but his heart rate drifted by 14%. His engine was overheating massively. We stopped all speed work, no intervals, no tempo runs. For 12 weeks, we did nothing but zone two base building to fix the drift. He hated it. He felt slow, but the drift dropped 14%, 8%, 4%, and finally 2.5%. Six months later, he ran the Valencia Marathon. He didn't cramp. He didn't hit the wall. He ran a 325. He shaved 35 minutes off his time, not by learning to run faster, but by learning not to slow down. Eight, the solution, rebuilding the engine. So you failed the test. What now? We need to rebuild your aerobic house. We need to enter a phase of base building. This requires discipline and it means running at a pace that feels embarrassingly slow. It means watching your heart rate, not your GPS pace. It means doing aerobic decoupling runs every week until that number drops below 5%. You cannot build a skyscraper on a swamp. If the base is drifting, the peak will never get higher. Nine, the pitch, send me your file. Here is the deal. You have the protocol. You have the rule of eight. Go do the test. You will see the numbers. But seeing the problem is not the same as fixing it. Is your drift caused by dehydration? Low blood volume? Is it caused by lack of muscle endurance? Inefficient fibers? Is it pure aerobic inefficiency? Each cause requires a different training block. If you want to stop guessing, if you want an expert to look at your file and tell you exactly why your engine is overheating, join the team. Inside the channel membership, we have specific base building plans designed to crush cardiac drift. Or if you want me to analyze your data personally every week, apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Go do the test. Ideally, write your result in the comments. Drift 4% or drift 12 beats. Let's see the truth. 
Train smart. Your running journey powered by science.